This video is brought to you by the Kingsway Group, distributor for Microlite's backup edge software for Unix and Linux systems. What's your data worth? We're speaking with uh, Jordan Dodge from Activision Red Octane uh, about Guitar Hero 4. We're just taking a look at it over here on the side. And I just got to play Everlong on the drums. And I am so happy right now. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, tell me a bit just about some of the differences, other than you know the drums and the microphone being added. Uh, what's new in Guitar Hero World Tour? Yeah, as you said, the most notable, as you said, the most noticeable difference was adding the vocals and adding the drums. Um, but the other really huge innovation that we've made next leap forward with with the software is in Guitar Hero World Tour, we've added this music studio, music creator where you really can go in and compose an original piece of music that will be unique. You'll be able to refine it in GH Mix. You'll then be able to upload it to a service called GH Tunes, which allows you to publish your music around the world via Xbox Live, PlayStation Network, and on the Wii as well. And will allow anyone with access to the system to download your music, listen to it, play it, rate it, and it's going to create this growing community of musicians that will get their music discovered through Guitar Hero World Tour. All right, cool. So, uh, does, does that mean that all four instruments will be, I mean, instruments, vocals included, uh, will be usable as uh, elements of these songs? You know, unfortunately, we aren't able to work with the vocals. Um, there are a couple of reasons be behind it. Um, one of the reasons is we don't want somebody holding a mic up to a speaker and creating music that way. Um, this is more about innovation and creating new music for the community. So you have the lead guitar, a bass guitar, a rhythm guitar, as well as the drums. And we've also added a keyboard, so you can get some really cool synth sounds in there. You know, maybe the Doogie Howser theme song. You know, some cool stuff like that. So uh, if that's the case, then it, pretty much everything is going to be instrumental, right? Correct. Uh, we will allow you to select kind of a rhythm, um, a melody for the vocals, so that way somebody knows what pitch. If you're creating a piece of music and you have a pitch in mind with what the vocals should be at, you'll be able to add that to the song so that if somebody downloads your music, they'd at least have an idea of what you were going for with that composition. Uh, but if you wanted to add something like words, or if you wanted words, yeah. would, would you be able to input text or something? Unfortunately not. Again, we just run into some issues there um, that we haven't been able to work out, but that's definitely something we're looking forward to in the future. And if people want to create stuff like Beatles music or things like that, they would actually be able to, at least to do uh, the instrumental parts then? Technically they would be able to. We're not condoning that because it's licensed music. We're giving you the tools to do Doogie something. Doogie theme song. <laughs> we're giving you the tools to do something like that. Um, but there will be a system in place that kind of polices the the music that's uploaded. So, uh, you know, policing might not be the right term because it's nothing that you're not going to get thrown in jail. But what will happen is it'll be similar to YouTube, where the where a copyright holder can can place a claim. Yeah, and then in which case it would get pulled down. If the average user sees something that sounds like it's copywritten, then it would get put into a holding tank where somebody goes through, listens to it, verifies whether it's copywritten or not. If it isn't, it goes back up. If it is, it gets pulled down. Now let's say the user uh, makes it and doesn't upload it. Would they still be able to keep that content on their own system? Absolutely, absolutely. All the music that you create, you get to keep. Um, the very small file sizes, so you can cre create an almost endless supply of music. Um, and then it's up to you whether you want to publish the music or not. Very cool. All right, so let's talk a bit about peripherals because uh, you've added in the drums and I mean the microphone it's a, just a general USB mic right? Absolutely. So the drums then I mean that's really the big major major addition although the guitar has changed a bit. Let's let's actually start with the guitar since that's the small change. Well it's not that small of a change. It may be a small change cosmetically because it's similar in color but we've added a touch sensitive slider bar which works in a couple of ways. Um, you can use it to almost play slap bass, where you're holding down the fret on the guitar as you normally would, but then instead of strumming, you're slapping the slider, so you get that sense of playing a slap bass. Um, the other functionality that it has 
is on these wicked solos in, you know, say, Hot for Teacher. You're able to slide your hand up and down the slider without having to strum, where it's just a matter of catching the notes. So it's an easier way and it's a more fun way of almost playing through these really epic, epic solos without, you know, having to refine the entire gameplay. And now to the major, major change, the drum kit. Uh, how, what, what was the... Were there any particular difficulties in putting this together with drums? You know, with creating any piece of hardware or software, you're obviously going to run into hiccups along the way. Um, nothing that we weren't able to overcome. Um, the drum, creating a drum kit controller has been a long time coming. Um, we spent a lot of time, got a lot of expert opinions um, throughout the process. I mean, going back to early stages of development, not just people that create great video game hardware, but people that have been very familiar with drum kit peripherals in general. All the way up until early testing stages, we brought in legendary drummers like Chad Smith, Stuart Copeland, and, and Travis Barker to come in and really play, the, play our, our drum kit controller to see how closely it simulates a, an authentic drum kit. And one of the things that Travis Barker said that I think sums it up best is, you know, he wanted to be able to close his eyes and play his music and the way that he would on an, on an actual set of drums, and he feels comfortable doing that with our game. That's very cool. So now I'm going to ask a little bit of a tough question, and we already know that this is coming. So, uh, you know, because this is very much in competition with Rock Band and such, uh, was there any difficulty in actually, you know, a any issues with making a game that is essentially sort of copying that? You know, copying, saying sort of like, it's it's kind of tough there. You know, it's what came first, the chicken or the egg. I mean, you're creating a music game. You already have the guitar. Obviously, the next steps are the drums and the, and the vocals. But um, one of the things that we were we set out to do when we first started making Guitar Hero World Tour was make the game that we wanted to build. You know, people might want to bring up competition. The way that we look at it is an opportunity to expand the genre as a whole. When you look at, you know, games like Halo and Grand Theft Auto, you know, while technically they are competitors, they both further the, the genre and they further the video game industry. And when you look at what, what the music rhythm genre has become over the last three years, it went from being a very small piece of the pie to you know, upwards of a third of the entire video game industry. It's it's huge. Yeah, absolutely. And they even have Guitar Hero competitions. And absolutely. I guess we're going to start seeing uh, Rock Band and Guitar Hero World Tour yeah. full band competitions soon, won't we? They're all over the place. And we've got the eight-player battle of the band. So now you'll have competitions online over Xbox Live, PlayStation Network, through Wii as well. And it'll be amazing because you'll be able to play with two, ple two people locally, another person in New York, somebody else in Toronto against a full band that's scattered throughout the world. Very, very cool. Uh, and since I'm already asking about Rock Band, I was speaking earlier uh, with Paul Morsudi from EA uh, about the state of the drums and the quality of the peripherals. Uh, many people are already used to the clicking and the, the style of the Guitar Hero guitar. But as far as drums goes, nobody really knows what to expect. I mean, except us, because we already played it. So, with all that in mind, what is the, what would you say, especially ha probably having played on Rock Band just to test it out and such, uh, you know, the quality. What is the quality of the Guitar Hero drum kit? Well, as I'd mentioned earlier, is that this is definitely something that we've put a lot of effort into, spent a lot of time with, consulted a lot of experts, and we are very pleased and very excited with how the peripheral has come, has progressed along in its development cycle. Um, you know, it starts with a prototype, moves along, and we're at a point where in terms of the feel when you're doing drum rolls and the bounce back, the quality and sturdiness of the drum kit controller as a whole, where we feel like you're getting a very, very strong piece of hardware. So people can really do some thrashing on this. Absolutely, absolutely. We actually have a, a video that's been circling around internally with somebody taking a hammer to, uh, to the pads, and it's, uh, it's pretty neat to see. Thank you very much, Jordan. Thanks a lot.